told him what I meant, and Mom said, let's talk as the book to be forwarded, and I said, you were my teenage heartthrob. Had all your posters on my walls, and I wrote you letters to give me a autographed photo that you didn't. Three months later, I tore all your pictures down off my walls. He said, well, I'll make this up to you. He did. He did a Ford, a beautiful Ford. I'm going to do it. So, go to, oh, you can follow Daisy Page author, and you can see that Ford on my, on my Facebook. It'll make you cry. Make sure you have tissues when you read on it. But in moments, stay right. Go. Listen to the vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome back Miss Daisy Page. Um, she's here to tell us about a new book that's out. Um, and before we get started, Daisy, kind of give a quick story uh, about you. So some of the, the, the new audience knows who you are. Okay. Um, um. Born and raised here in Texas. I'm always finding myself back home in te- uh, my hometown. About every four and a half years, some sort of trauma or tragedy always brings me back home. I've tried to escape, so to speak, many times, but it never fails. I'm always back. The last time that I came home was Hurricane Harvey had destroyed my home. Mm -hmm. So I moved back to my hometown again where um, family and friends are that can support me because I just found out in 2021 that I had a rare terminal neurological disorder known as MSA. And Kyle, by the way, I don't know if you know it or not, but it is MSA month. Oh, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Multi-system atrophy. Um, And it's March is the month of awareness. So, hopefully, awareness. Yeah, hopefully you will bring more awareness to this so uh, people know, you know, what others are going through, what you're going through. And you are remarkable, you're brave. And for someone who, I, I tell you, if I was in your shoes, I probably would have just gave up. But you're determined to keep going and and you're trying to help others and... I tell you, I have no room to complain about the things that are going wrong in my life after all that you've been through. And I just want you to know that I do appreciate you. And I, I hope the audience grows to appreciate you as well. Well, thank you, Kyle. That means a lot to me. Now, I'm not going to say there's not been times that I've wanted to throw the towel in, but. Of course. I know that God's going to give me better days and more more good days than bad days. Mm-hmm. So I just have to keep thinking that and enjoy life however I can for now. Yeah. Well, as, the roses. exactly. I mean, as you said, this is terminal, and um, anyone else would be taking this time to themselves but you are determined to to help others and uh, i mean how many folks out there are going through a lot less and they're just spending the time selfishly and you are selfless but um your second book or this is your second book right that's coming out yes it's been out since let me tell you. Okay. March seventh of twenty twenty two, um, unexpected moments came out. Then March fifth of twenty twenty three, my new book, 
Beyond Heaven's Gates came out. So two books, one year. Wow. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about the book? Yes, it starts out with um, some visions or dreams that I've had about heaven. And I truly believe that God gave me those visions to share with people so that they can re really understand the fact that there is another life. There's an eternal life, and it's in this marvelous place that we call heaven. And um, I'll share one story. I was walking, and I don't know, if, like I said, if these are visions or if they're dreams. But I was walking on this golden path, and I came to the end, and it was a golden shore. And I looked to the left, and I saw what I thought was Jesus reading, sitting on a boulder under a tree, reading to children that were sitting on smaller boulders. So I could see his profile. So I, I wanted to walk over there and sit on a, a boulder myself and, and listen to it. But as I was walking there, I ran into like an invisible wall and I couldn't go any further. So I turned around and when I did, I looked um, at the Golden Shores and I saw a boat full of my family members, my dad, my grandpa, my grandma, my twin boys. And I was saying, hey, hey, and none of them could hear me. So I said, well, might as well go back to the garden. So I just walked back to the garden, and when I did, I, I walked out of my closet. And I was back in my bedroom. Wow. You know, we were talking on a, a, a show this morning. A buddy of mine just, just started. And we were talking about the importance of God. Um, it seems like society wants to kick him out. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know how else to put it, but yeah, kick God out of our lives. I I think too many people um I don't they don't want that conviction in their life. They they want to uh justify being able to do whatever they want. So they want to make out like God is some made up character like santa claus or something and right it's it's and disheartening it's so, it's so upsetting that you used to you feel safe in a church mm -hmm. church was the most safest place you felt and now just like when was it yesterday there was that shooting in the catholic mm -hmm. school i mean they should be safe in school Catholic school too, but church has been shooting through churches. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so sad. We've got to bring God back into this country and how they want to take under God out of the equation of allegiance, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, they want to get the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse and uh, I, you know, and it's sad to say there are some churches it seems like they're making God kind of a an afterthought. It's I, I just don't understand some of the churches nowadays. They're becoming more worldly and that that's disheartening as well. Yeah. I don't I have to admit, I don't go to church anymore. Which I can't. Yeah, of course. But, but if there's two or more of you together, that's church. I will watch church on um, on video, mm -hmm. and I have my devotionals every day still with God. And then I have a priest friend. Anytime I'm feeling low, I'll just give him a call, and he'll pray for me. And Ashley, my priest friend, He's driving in from um, more South Texas now to come and visit with me and pray over me. That's I'm cool. excited about that. I haven't seen him in a while, so 
I'm very excited about that. <laughs> that is really cool. And it's it's difficult for you to do anything nowadays. How are you able to muster up the strength to, to write a book? Peck, 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 <laughs> That's why this book is really, really short. Mm -hmm. But it took so long to write. It took much longer to write this book than did unexpected moments. This is which is a pretty you know, long book. There's sixty four chapters in that book and it only took me three months. Wow. Uh, so my condition has worsened. I yeah. I can't walk at all. You know, I used to I could be able to walk with assistance. Mm -hmm. But I can't walk at all. Um, I had surgery in January to have a super, super pubic catheter installed. Mm -hmm. And I went back because the first time you're supposed to have the doctor change the first catheter out. And then she let her nurse do it. And she missed my bladder. Oh, no. Yeah, and so she was giving me water to drink because she wanted to be, get a UA, but nothing was coming out of the tube. Well, she sent me on home with a cup. Still nothing was coming out. I was bloated. I mean, I was so full and had, it was heavy, you know, miserable. I told my husband, I said, you've got to take me to urgent care. So he took me to urgent care. We told them. Along, on the way on the phone what was going on so as soon as I got there they, they rushed me back to CT and they saw that it wasn't even in the, in the bladder mm -hmm. and so they had a person there that knew how to do them mm -hmm. so they took it out and when they put it in the, the hole to the bladder had already closed so they made this little hammock during your surgery for the tuberculosis cat, um, catheter mm -hmm. that sews from your bladder to your abdomen wall so the, the urine doesn't go anywhere else. They broke through the wall and so then I had internal bleeding and I also had a UTI so I had urine all throughout my, my, my body. Infected urine. And they, they, they gave me some Dilaudid and my oxygen level was dropping to 70, 69, you know. And I already told my husband to call my mom. And she's a nurse and she was, I have a DNR. So she was doing a sternum rub on my chest, screaming, mm -hmm. breathe, breathe, Daisy, breathe. So... I almost, I almost got to leave this world, but I said, no, nope, not yet. Oh, God still got plans for you. I'm glad you're here today to talk to me. Me too. I was so excited to come back when, when you sent that email or oh, replied to my email. I, I've uh, mentioned you to several people and um, and how much that I admire what you're doing and your your bravery, your mustering up what little strength that you have. Um, you're an inspiration. Thank you. I I do. I must say, you know. It progresses quickly, mm -hmm. and I'm to the stage now where I, I choke a lot, and aspiration is common, and then a lot of times you can get pneumonia, mm -hmm. and then that's how a lot of people with MSA pass, unfortunately, so... Mm -hmm. I have to be really careful when I eat or take my medicine for that matter. You have just been through hell and back again in this world. 
You know, I, I don't think some of the folks out there know what you went through from your childhood on up. Well, um, I was a devoted Christian from the age of eight years old. Mm -hmm. I knew the Bible from the front to the back by the time I was five. Um, but I was sexually molested from the age of nine to 14. And then raped. And then beat as I was married to my first husband. So I feel like I was cheated out of life because all I ever wanted was a family. I mean, when I was little, I, I remember saying, I can't wait to have my own family. I just want a family, you know. And I never really got to experience that because my son was only five years old when my husband and I divorced. But he he beat me, so that was not a place that my children should have grown up in. And my youngest daughter now, she can't accept it. So she's put up a wall. She's like, if I don't see it, it's not happening, you know, kind of. And I haven't seen her since July. She lives in the same town I do. Yeah, I I understand where she's coming from. I mean, I've, I've done the same thing when my grandpa was real sick. And, mm -hmm. I mean, he practically raised me. He was like a father more than a grandfather. And when he got sick and... I knew it wasn't going to be long before he was gone. I just, I couldn't stand to see him deteriorate. And I, I know the, the thinking that your daughter has, um, it's not right. And I, yeah. I, I regret that I wasn't there, but. And that's know. the thing. I don't want her to have to live with those regrets. I mean, her grandmother had brain and lung cancer mm -hmm. she only went to see her a handful of times before she passed and then her dad died of septic um, pneumonia she wouldn't go to the hospital to see him so she, she didn't get to tell him goodbye which they didn't really never talk you know Yeah. but she's known about my illness for some time and I told her back in June that I was getting worse. She came over in July to bring my husband a Father's Day present. Um, she didn't even get me a Mother's Day present. Mm. But she said that there was no more communication between the two of us by phone, by text, by message, social media, no goodbyes. Um, she was the mm. that really, really hurt. I know it does. I know it does. Yeah. And stress makes it worse. So after that happened, that's when I kind of started going downhill a lot faster. Starting to lose my speech. I have a speech therapist every, every week that comes to my house. Um, I have a nurse practitioner that comes every other week. A nurse that comes every week. And then I have an occupation therapist that comes to well. You're still fighting to the end. I'm hanging in there as long as I can. But was really strange when I saw my doctor in January he had a student with it and I told her you know she said how you like how you like her I said I love Dr. Williams I said she's awesome she's very um 
understanding. She spends two and a half hours or more with me every time I come. And she knows, well, I noticed that. She keeps leaving the room, and what we do is go give injections to other people, and then she comes back to your room and visits with you more. And she says she was your fav- you were her favorite patient. I said, oh. Anyway, she was talking to my mom and, and typing on, on the computer, so I know she wasn't listening to me and the student. But I said, she's so personable. She understands everything and makes sure I comprehend and everything, know everything before I leave. I said, she makes me just want to squeeze her and give her a big old hug when I leave. And she walked over before I left and she gave me a really big, tight hug. I felt like she was Telling me goodbye. I um, I only see her every four months. I promise I wasn't gonna cry. (laughs) Y'all gone, you Daisy? (laughs) (laughs) I told you I already had my cry for the day, and I. She. She did, though. She made me feel like I wouldn't see her again. Uh. But you know what? I'm not scared to go. The only thing that worries me is going back with pain. I want to go peacefully in my sleep or something, you know. Yeah. I don't want to have a painful experience for a while. Been through enough. You know, um, you know about my, my disease. Yeah. And I have days that the the pain is excruciating, but you, you go through a lot worse than I do. There's days I I want to give up, but. Oh, me too. (laughs) I was telling somebody the other day, I wish they had assisted suicide here in Texas because I was sure go. Um, I'm just tired of fighting um, through the pain and not seeing the people that I want to see. And then just want to throw that towel in and give up. But now I I have another project. I'm republishing unexpected moments that way I can have and it's been some moments in me on Heaven's Gate together on Amazon. Oh, and I didn't finish telling you. After the glimpses of heaven, mm-hmm. that the, their short story, then the book goes into unexpected moments continue. Living with MSA is what it's called. Okay. Yeah, I I am going to put the links to uh, buy your books in the description for folks. This is, um, I I think it's important to get that message out to as many people as we can. You know, I, um, you know, I I ask people to subscribe to my channel at the end of my videos. And sometimes I'll say, you know, please share it because, you know, I, I wanted to make money at this, but if you, no one or if anyone out there is listening and if you never share any of my videos if you just share this one not for me but for daisy oh god i would, I would really appreciate it um even if i never got another share or like or subscription from this day on just do this one for, for daisy you're sweet. 
Mm-hmm. And I want to say that 10% of all of my book proceeds, both books, go to MSA. Um, charity, called to feed MSA.org. And there's also a little the donation link in the backs of both of my books. So if anybody wants to donate extra for research and for support for caregivers and for patients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone, please, if you're listening to this, help any way that you can. You know, um, this, I mean, she's, she's not going to make it through this. And she's spending her time trying to bring awareness to this. She's trying to help other people. And I think it's the least we can do is to try to help her out. You know, buy a book or donate to MSA, anything you can. You know, I'm sounding like I'm doing a, a charity drive, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, um, I want people to know that are being abused, that there's help out there for that as well. Um, that they're not alone and that there's somebody, they have God and they have somebody here. That's the earth angel to save them if they just reach out for him. Um, God, uh, God doesn't put this on us. We, uh, we were given free will and how we use our free will. Um, that's, that's why things like this happen because there are people out there that just, they, they abuse that um that gift it's a gift of free will it's your choice whether you want to follow god you want to love god if you want to love your fellow man um and you know it, it happens to a lot of people out there the the abuse whether it's uh sexually or mentally physically uh, we need to bring more awareness to that um you can you could be a a vessel for for God if you go out and you help people. You know, there's yeah. too too much hate in this world. We we need to love thy neighbor, like the Bible says. Exactly, emotional abuse to me is just as bad as the sexual abuse. You know, you can't take that thing away once it's said. It's said and it's in your head you repeat it to yourself over and over again throughout your life it never goes away yeah and it seems like the the people that are the closest to you when they say something um it it just it takes more of an effect a stranger tells me something i could care less yeah you know you i've had people call me names on, on, through my uh, messages and and told some pretty uh nasty words that i'm not gonna repeat <laughs> i i could care less but you know uh, a parent grandparent aunt uncle someone like that and that cuts That's deep like stab through the heart yeah. yeah or your spouse you know that's a that's hurt that hurts even when they apologize you still can't take it away no no you know and it's what gets me is when they apologize but they still try to make it out like it's your fault that it happened in the first place yes (laughs) that's narcissism at its best right Mm, that's how my first husband was i'm lucky now though i have Finally, after I, I moved to New York, the upstate New York, for four and a half years, mm-hmm. and I uh, was hit over the head with a ceramic bowl and pressured my school. So I had got some help to get back home to Texas. And I met an old friend that I'd known since I was five years old, and we ended up 
a couple months later started dating. And we've been together ever since 2008. 2010 we got married. And I know God put him back in my path for a reason. Because any of my exes would have Bye, see you later, figure it out, you know. Mm-hmm. He helps me. He helps me every day to get situated from the hospital bed that I'm in to the little chair to the couch where I can hang out in the room with him and watch some TV. And just, I mean, it's, it sucks it being in the same room, looking at the same four walls every day, but. I'm still alive. I know that. And I love when I sleep. I, I sleep really hard and I dream. And I can walk and I can run in my dreams. And I know that's how it's going to be in heaven. And every time I've been in, to heaven and my glimpses or visions, I've been able to walk and run and I can't wait to do that again. You've got a great treasure waiting for you when you get there. Yes, I can't wait. I heard that the worse you have it here on earth, if you're the better person you are, the better place you have in heaven. So I can't wait to see that mansion of mine in heaven. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be walking by and going, ah, right, look at that. Daisy's living it up in the in the big house, and we're. <laughs> I, I'll you know what I've told people I would rather clean the streets of gold with a toothbrush, than spend a day in hell. There is a book that I can't recall that I think it's eight minutes of hell, or nine minutes of hell, and it's, this guy died. And he spent eight or nine minutes in hell. When he came back, you know, he became a Christian. He said, I don't want to go back to that place. No. No. This earth is hell enough. That's what I call this my hell. It's here on earth. I don't know what I've done. You know, I ask God, so what have I done to deserve this? But I know that it's not put on me by God. Right. No, I didn't choose to get this disease, but with only four out of every, what is it, 100,000 people that get diagnosed with it, there's got to be awareness because there's more people out there than that that are that have it that haven't been diagnosed yet so it starts off um msap starts off like parkinson's and that's the kind i have so many people that have, think they have parkinson's they really don't but the only way that you can truly get diagnosed i mean i would look confirmed diagnosis is to donate your brain, which I'm going to do. And they look at um, under a microscope. Wow. So um, what, what, what kind of tests did they give you to for you to find out? Well, they got us Parkinson's so they gave me Parkinson's medicine. Mm-hmm. All it did was make me really, really sick. And then they have the um, movement disorder specialist. Gives you a, you know, he just examines you and has you do certain, certain little tasks. And all and he can tell you, like he told me it was in five minutes. It's not MSA. I mean, it's not Parkinson's. You're progressing too quickly. Um, I believe you have MSA. And I was like, can you fix me? He was like, no, unfortunately, there's no cure for MSA. Basically, but, they have to rule stuff out. 
to yeah. diagnose you with MSA. To limit, limit was, how much I say? They have to eliminate other things to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Like they did a PET scan on me. I have it. MRI has CT. The only and nothing shows up in it. But the only thing he did see was my cerebellar had struck from a previous um, uh, MRI. Um, and they have now a clinical trial. And I have applied for it, but you have to have your symptoms less than five years. And you have to be able to walk. Two minutes by yourself, so I was too far progressed, and I can't take the clinical trial. Mm. Well, I tell you what, Daisy. Since I met you, you know, I might tell my wife, "Yeah, my back's hurting today," or whatever. But I definitely don't sit here and complain like I used to. So I got no reason to complain. If you're hurting, you do. Well, you know, yeah, I, I just feel like I've got it. I don't have it as bad, so I got no reason to complain. Yeah, okay, yeah, my back hurts. I go through some bad days. I have my good days, but at least I can still walk, you know? Look, Kyle, you have a story that needs to be told, too. And I think you should write a book. I was talking to a guy about writing a book the other day. Um, I'll, I'll just give you my ideas. I'll let you write it for me. <laughs> I have learned. I wish I would have done the last one on Amazon. Because unexpected moments, the publisher of I paid over $4,000 to that publisher, and I only have made $250 in royalty. Amazon, I've had, I'm having skates on it for um, just a couple of weeks, and I've already made like $70 in royalty, so I think when I put other um, and so the mama's on there, the royalties will really start kicking in and they'll give more money to charity. I'm not looking for the money for me. I'm looking for the money for charity. Well, and my children, when I do go, that's my life insurance because I don't have any life insurance. And they'll be able to get that money forever. That's why I think it's important for you folks out there to help the best that you can and uh, spread the word. You know, more people need to be aware. We need to try to help out this family any way that we can. I, ha I have asked for help for other folks in the past, and I appreciate what, what you can do. And I know times are tough, but geez, for some folks, it's a lot tougher. I want to say it is getting so hard to transport my specialist two, two hours away and getting in and out of my car is becoming very difficult for me. I really, and I pray every night I need a handicapped van. So I can get that chair up in there and not have any problems getting in and out of my vehicle. So whatever I don't have to donate to charity at first I think I'm going to get the handicap van so if people can help me get that van I will really appreciate it. 
I mean, you, and you, you, you worked hard to get these books out, you know, so it's not like you're just saying, hey, me money. You, you did something to earn it. So um, let's be a blessing, folks. Uh, I, I hope um, a lot of you have made it this far in the video or if you're listening to this on an audio. Um, I am going to leave some links and uh, I, I hope you will do what you can. And I hope you get another book out and you uh, come back on my show. I'm done writing. <laughs> You're done writing? Except for I'm reworking um, unexpected moments because it was blocked paragraph, you know, where there wasn't spaces in it. So I'm putting spaces between the paragraphs. I'm making a few changes to a few words. Um, it's taking me a little while, but I'm going to get that put on Amazon. So if they don't, you got my ex Libris link, don't you? Well, I'm sorry, what was that? You've got my ex Libris link. I believe so. To purchase the unexpected moments. I, I think I, I, I believe you sent it to me in an email. Um, but um, look, I'll, I'll check and I'll make sure. If um, if I don't see it, I'll I'll, um, I'll write to you. Well, I'll go ahead and send it to you in an email just to make sure that you have it. And you, okay. I sent you um. I mean, the Beyond Heaven's Gate link. Yeah. But they uh, got to read an expected moments first or they'll be like lost. Exactly. Well, um, yeah, anything that you want to share, please send it my way. I'm going to put it in the description. And um, I, wanna, I want everyone, please, 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 if, you, if you're listening to this, help. You know, be a blessing. And Daisy, uh, I wish you nothing but the best, dear. And thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you. And I want to say to people, don't take life for granted. Stop and smell the roses, so to speak. Be thankful you can walk every day. Be thankful you can shower, you can wash your hair, you can brush your hair, you can get dressed, and do all the simple basic necessities every day that you do. Because one day, like a snap of a finger, it can all be taken away from you like it has me. So yeah. now I I just pray to God, thank you for another day. And give me more so I can see my son. And I think that's what it's all about. Because I didn't think I'd be here till Christmas. But here I am now with another book. And I think God was let me stay long enough to do this book and see my son. Yeah. And, you know, I... I think it's really important that you let all your loved ones know how much you care about them because yeah. we're not guaranteed tomorrow um, uh, I, real quickly uh, I want to kind of mention a, a friend of mine who uh, he was on his way to uh, to a picnic and he had organized it to get a bunch of friends together and on the way his wife had a stroke and she uh, she flatlined and mm -hmm. they revived her but she had flatlined again at the hospital and oxygen had uh, was not getting to her brain and so she lost the ability to, to walk and talk and all these things. And she was so far gone that she just wasn't going to make it. And uh, 
they had her on life support, but she, she just passed away. And I mean, it can be taken away from you that quickly. So, um, I'm sorry, we broke up there. So you don't know what the next minute's going to bring you. Exactly. And so, or tomorrow. So, yeah. So uh, count your many blessings. Yeah. And and don't wait for, you know, your your kids to call you or someone else. You, you make that effort and uh, let them know, you know, your, your friends, your neighbors. And uh, we, we need to stop all this division and hate that's going on in the world. And we need to really start loving one another again. And bringing God back into the country. Amen. Amen to that. That's um, what oh, we didn't mention it to those that don't know. Kirk Cameron poured in my first book, and it's such a moment. And that's what he wants to do is put God back in the world. And I stand behind him 100%. He's doing an amazing job out there. But we need more people like him. Yeah. To do it. That's right. You know, he was uh, a heartthrob and he he gave all that up to to uh, to follow God and to bring his word. I mean, yeah, he, he still acts, but he does more Christian stuff. And um, he has a new kiss another lady. He has his wife standing to kiss her during any movies or shows. And I love that. I think that shows, you know. That's respect. How committed, yeah. How committed and respect did he is toward her? That's that's amazing. Um, I told him when I met him, I said, with Saga as the book to be forwarded, I said, You were my teenage heartthrob. Had all your posters on my walls. And I wrote you letters to give me a autograph photo that you did three months later I tore all your pictures down off my walls he said well I'll make this up to you he did he did a Ford and a beautiful Ford I'm going to do it so go to oh you can follow Daisy Page author and you can see that Ford on my on Facebook it'll make you cry Make sure you have tissues when you read on it. But in moments, too, right? Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm glad I had my Kleenex next to me today. <laughs> we weren't going to do this, and we did it anyway. No. <laughs> You're a blessing, Daisy. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me, Kyle. I really appreciate it. And you are in a special, I mean, Beyond Heaven's Gate, you're in the book. I'm in the book? Yeah. Aw, thank you, Daisy. That's That means a lot to me. Dog on you, Daisy. <clears throat> I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I, I thank you, and I thank all you folks out there, too. Um, if you are new to the channel... Um, yeah, please subscribe, and I hope you'll come back. But if you don't, at least share this out for Daisy's sake. And the same goes to my regulars out there. Um, and I thank you all for making it possible for, for me to do this. Uh, I, I hope to see you on the next one. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network 